I think everybody is very well aware of the great changes that have been in Tweed Salmon over the last few years. In this presentation, I'll be showing some of the biology that lies behind these changes and also give some numbers. To begin with, looking at numbers over the season, through the season. Uh, the first graph is going to be from February to April. This is only going to go up to 2019 because there's essentially no useful data from 2020 because of the COVID restrictions. Now, what you'll see on this and following graphs is a blue dotted line, and that's the trend line for the period over the years since 1980. And there's also... Uh, red line, which is the long-term average from 1980 onwards. And for this period, February to April, you can see it's a general downward trend, gentle downward trend, uh, not been very good at all in the last few years. And these are all spring salmon at this time of year. Moving on to May, it's a different trend. Again, the data only goes up to 2019, no, nothing useful or usable from 2020. And here the trend is a gentle upwards one leveling off in more recent years. And May is a mixed month. It's mainly spring salmon, but you've also got the earliest of the summer salmon coming in as well. Now from June, Onwards, we do have data from 2020. Fishing effort would have been reduced, but it was relatively normal. And you can see, in fact, in June, the upward trend is uh, quite obvious, helped by the very large June catches of 2020. June's still a mixed month. You've got the last of the spring salmon coming in, but you've also got summer salmon, more summer salmon. And at the end of the month, there is the first proper gross run. July and August uh, is again very much upward in recent years, helped by the very large catches of 2020, not quite matching 2011. They might have done with full fishing effort. But the point here is that there are a number of caveats. It starts from a very low level. There really wasn't summer fishing in the 1980s and 90s. In fact, boats were taken off the river at that time. Around 2000, you've got the end of significant commercial netting in the estuary. And 2018, we've got the end of coastal netting. So the decline in netting will have helped increase the numbers of fish being caught in the river at this time of year. But there are also significant changes in the size and the age of fish as well at this time of year. And these are quite independent of the netting changes. And of course, at this time of year, it's basically all summer salmon and grills. Moving on to September, again, this is a mixed month. You've got the ending of the summer fish, beginning of the autumn fish. And it's a in trend, it's a rather flat upward trend, rather variable though. October and November, which is autumn salmon and grills, we've got very much a downward trend, no surprise, in recent years. Just the odd, very significant peak though, 2010, 2013, which perhaps against the trend. So it's clear there's different trends at different times of year. In the brown here, we've got the autumn catches, and these are smoothed, which is to say each year's number is averaged with the number for the year before and the year after, and that smooths, it, smooths things out. And you can see the downward, the trend, the brown dotted line, very much downward since about 2000. Whereas the summer trend uh, is very much upwards. The problem for the fishery, of course, is that while the autumn 
has come down in thousands. The summer has just come up in hundreds, at least as, as yet. Now we've seen uh, this sort of thing before. Here's some data on long-term trends in the lower river, uh, going back to 1860s. Now these are percentages because to get this length of data, we have had to amalgamate, combine, catch data from different fisheries, and not every fishery has data for every year. And you can see, and looking at the catches before and after the 1st of September, because September seems to be a sort of hinge month uh, for the fishery. And we can see back in the latter 19th century, most fish were caught after the 1st of September and autumn phase. Then the middle of the 20th century, they're mainly caught before the 1st of September, uh, a spring and summer phase. And again, the latter 20th century, early 21st century, we've got most fish being caught after the 1st of September again. So we've got essentially two autumn periods and one earlier period. But they're not identical. In the latter 19th century, it was mainly autumn salmon. In latter 20th century, it was mainly autumn grills. And in between, it was mainly spring salmon. So while it looks as if we're going into another earlier phase, when most fish will be caught before the 1st of September, it doesn't follow it's got to be identical to this previous earlier phase, which is mainly spring salmon. In fact, the way things are going, it looks as if we're going into a summer salmon period. And if that's the case, we are going to ho have to hope for an awful lot of wet summers in the future. Now, if the data is smoothed, uh, the pattern comes out more clearly and it begins to look as if indeed we are back in this earlier sort of phase with most fish being caught before the 1st of September. Now, moving on to look at changes in sizes and types. Again, this is in the cold stream area and this sort of data is independent of angling and netting effort. You can see from February to April, we have got more larger fish of 10 to 15 pounds in the more recent years. And that matches with what we can see from scale reading. Because we've now got 20, 25% of the fish at this time of year as three sea winters. They've spent three years out at sea so they can come back bigger. Whereas in the 1980s, 1990s, it was just a very small proportion were 3C winter. And indeed, there's some very much larger fish, 20 up to 30 pounds, uh, which hasn't been heard of in spring since the 1920s. May and June, it's the same sort of story. Many more fish in that sort of 10 to 15 size group. And that again matches with more 3C winter fish in the scale reading samples. And again, some very much larger fish that are appearing since about 2005. But the really interesting period is July and August. And we'll look at that in more detail later. You can see that there's been a big increase in larger fish. And this, that's from sort of 8 to 18 pounds. Whereas before, the fish were mainly these sort of 3 to 8 pound fish. And what we're seeing here is a switch from grills to salmon. So back in the 80s and 90s, 70, 80% of the fish were grills. Now, just 50, 60% of them are 
salmon. And there's even an element of three sea winter salmon, uh, which there wasn't in the 80s and the 90s. So there's a question here. You've got more and bigger summer fish. There's going to be more eggs of this type deposited in the catchment. What are the consequences of that going to be? Moving on to September, bit of a hinge month this, and you can see that there's a similar switch from grills towards multi-sea winter, but not to the same extent. Grills are still about half the catches in more recent years. In October and November, again, well, there's actually no great changes in the types and ages of fish, but the numbers are well down. The sizes are also down. So you can see back in the 80s and the 90s, only 5 to 10 percent or so of the fish caught in October and November were five pounds and under. Now it's around a quarter of the fish. And conversely, in the 80s and the 90s, it was 20, 25 percent of the fish, 15 pounds and over. Now just 11 or 12 percent. So same sort of question, there's fewer and smaller autumn fish, fewer eggs of this type being deposited in the river, what are the consequences of that going to be in the future? Right, moving back to July and August, because this is the really interesting period. Uh, we've got here the 80s and the 90s, and you can see most of the fish are three to ten pounds. Most of them, in fact, are autumn, are summer grills. If we add in the early 2000s, you can see that we've got this extra number of larger fish, nine to thirteen pounds, and a decrease in grills, an increase in salmon and even an increase in 3C winter salmon. And that's continuing on into the most recent years. We've got now around about 40% are grills and about 60% are salmon. The change appears to have happened in the early 2000s, that switch over from mainly grills to mainly salmon. Now a caveat in all this, these data are from rod caught fish. Angling is a highly selective sampling method. It doesn't necessarily give the full range of proportions of salmon running into a river. And we can see this by comparing the size pattern of net and rod caught fish on the lower tweed. The nets catch a much higher proportion of small four to five pound fish. But you have to think again, are they selecting for this size uh, and against larger fish? And so a selective sampling method, just like angling. And you can see that here. The rod caught fish have a fairly even uh, distribution of sizes, whereas the net caught fish are heavily concentrated at four to five pounds. Now that tells us we should not mix rod caught and net caught data, but have a consistent sampling method, so any sort of bias is also consistent. Conclusions. Well, the first isn't very startling. It's that the total number of fish caught in the tweed has dropped considerably over the last seven years. But size and age analyses show this is not a random collapse. It's a structured change because even within the overall downward trend, summer salmon have increased even as autumn grills have declined. And that such changes have happened before and the fishery has at different times been mainly in the autumn or mainly in the spring. Now this switch from grills to salmon is very important when looking at the numbers of fish, because grills have a shorter time at sea and so have a higher return rate than salmon. So a switch to salmon 
means fewer fish returning, regardless of other factors. And we can see this with data from the Sandstone Netting Station, which is the best in the Tweed, the first inside the estuary on the south bank. The blue line is the percentage of grills. And you can see that when we had what was called the grills trough in the 1910s, 1920s, 1910s, 1930s, the numbers of salmon being caught here were very low. You're talking less than a thousand fish a year for the best netting station on the river. As you go back a hundred years or so, when you've got a very high growth proportion, and you can see that the river, then this netting station was catching 10 to 12,000 fish in a year. Admittedly, with a longer fishing season, but uh, it still shows the difference. And what that reminds us is that not all impacts on fish numbers are man made. There are these long term, large scale trends and changes as well. So what about other rivers? Well, according to Tony George's work, and he was the pioneer of this sort of analysis, the Tweed has the most extreme switches between grills and salmon, while the northern rivers have the least extreme. So there's geographic variation, therefore, in these changes. What's happening on the Tweed is not necessarily happening the same way or to the same extent elsewhere. However, data collected by the Environment Agency suggests that similar trends are visible in rivers to the south. So these are the catch figures for the whole of England and Wales, the rod catch figures from 1992 to 2016. The red line is the grills, the one sea winter. The blue line is the salmon, the multi sea winter. And what you can see is that in recent years, salmon have come to outnumber grills in the catches. You'll also see that that red line has had a dramatic decrease in recent years, the growth decline. And in fact, in the most recent years, the multi-sea winter salmon catches have been relatively high, even as the growths have declined, very similar to what we've been seeing on the Tweed. Bringing that up a bit more to date, uh, this is data from 1997 to 2018. Now what the red proportion of the bars is showing is the proportion of rivers where salmon are less than 25% of the catch. The green proportion of the bars is showing the rivers where salmon are half or more of the catches. And what you can see is in the last seven, eight years, is that those rivers where grills have predominated have greatly decreased in number. Those rivers, the number of rivers where salmon have been the majority of the catch have been increasing in numbers. And that again is very much what we're seeing on the Tweed. In fact, the last sentence of the paragraph says, there has been a noticeable increase in the proportion of multi-sea winter fish and rod catches over the last seven years. And that's what we can say for the Tweed as well, particularly in summer. Now, the grills run shifting to the summer has other consequences as well, and we can see it uh, in other ways. So this is data from the counter on the River Tamar, in the southwest of England. As you can see, back in the early 2000s, only 10% of the grills were usually back by the 1st of August. That's because there were a lot of autumn grills that had to come in later. But by 2016, there are fewer autumn grills. So most of the grills run as summer fish. And there, that means that 50-60% of them are back by the 1st of August. That has consequences for changes as well. Obviously, summer grills, fish that come back sooner in the summer months, have less time feeding at sea, so they're smaller. Whereas autumn grills have a longer time at sea and come back bigger. 
So now that most of the grills are summer fish, they are averaging only four, four and a half pounds or so. Whereas back in the early 2000s, when there were many autumn grills that came back later, they came back bigger and the average was six and a half pounds or so. So what's the future? Well, I suspect it's going to be back to the future. Here's the Scotsman, the 12th December 1923, uh, saying that none can doubt the fact of the continuous decline of the tweed in autumn. And I suspect you could reuse that statement in 2023. Here's the Scotsman of the 6th December 1929. Until the second decade of the century, autumn was the only time when sport with salmon was anticipated on the Tweed. But it is now a spring river. And you have to wonder what might be written in 2029. Thank you for listening.